Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, a man webinar on with uh, Indian state of Andhra Pradesh to understand the investment opportunities in the state and also understand to also understand the profile of uh, investment profile of state of Andhra Pradesh. Now, before going into the the, the presentation, I would like to give you some introduction on MIM uh, program. MIM is an uh, investment support program run by Embassy of India, Berlin, Germany. We it's, it's functioning with the different facilitation partners like Indian states includes uh, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh. There are nine states. For, with, who are partners with MIM. We also have Invest India, which is a, a central partner who is handling investments, uh, investment promotion in India and also facilitating investments in India. We have knowledge partner Euroasia Consulting, who is handling all the market entry and expansion related queries, along with the tax and legal partners, Khaitan and Company, Rodeland Partner. We also have banking partners, State Bank of India, DG and KFW. IGCC is our Chamber of Commerce partner and also technology partner uh, Gita, which is Global Innovation and Technology Alliance. MIM, MIM is basically a free cost, free of cost program for all the German mid-sized and family-owned companies who want to enter or expand their activities in India. And in case you face any issues or any questions, you can always reach to MIM program on hotline and email, email account. Uh, we also conduct regular workshops and webinars, uh, which are all free of cost for the member and also the non-member companies. These are the topics which are related to the, to the investment promotion and also the market entry and expansion topics. We also conduct dedicated workshops in case you have any particular uh, uh, queries about Indian market or, uh, or let's say challenges you are facing about Indian market. We can call our uh, market experts at our subject matter, matter experts to guide you through. So these would be the customized workshops uh, for, for you on the specific queries. As of now, uh, Make in India Middle Stand program has onboarded 151 members, which has declared investment of around 1.4 billion euros, which includes 68 manufacturing plants, 29 expansions, 27 subsidiaries. Out of these 1.4 billion euro, 447 million euro has already implemented, which includes uh, 20 manufacturing plants and seven expansions. And 488 million euro is under progress, which includes 14 manufacturing plants. So you can see in last six years, we have able to mobilize around 1 billion euro of investment to India with helping all the investors and the, all the uh, interested investors with addressing all the challenges and queries they have raised during their expansion and entry projects. So with that, I would now like to hand it over to our first speaker, uh, Mr. Vishwadat, uh, who, is, who leads the project management unit at Andhra Pradesh Economic Development Board. He works closely with CEO and handles high value corporates and lies with CXOs of for facilitating trade and investment into the state. Vishwadat is management professional having diverse experience in the public sector as well as in private sector. He worked in senior positions at Indian Space Research Organization, Reliance Industries, before moving to the before moving to the Andhra Pradesh Economic Development Board. He, he is an MBA from Indian Institute of Management, Lucknow, and also a CFA charter holder from CFA Institute of the USA. Now I would like to uh, ask Mr. Vishwadat to share the screen and you can start your presentation. Well, thank you for the kind introduction, uh, Mr. Ketan Jadhav. I hope uh, my screen is visible now. Yes, it's visible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your introduction and just helping us get on speed on the Metal Slant program. And I mean, it's, it's phenomenal that you have uh, already implemented 477 million euros and I um, mean, in 20 manufacturing plants. That's great. So I would like to, I mean, without uh, 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 further ado, I would like to uh, have my uh, presentation on the investment opportunities in the state of Andhra Pradesh. So I would like to start with the, uh, I mean, the strengthening relationships between the state of Andhra Pradesh and Germany. Uh, which are uh, aided by the Embassy of 
Germany in India and as well as Embassy of India in Germany. Uh, because of their efforts, we were able to build sustained uh, targeting and momentum in the relationship. So these are only a few pictures of uh, Her Excellency, uh, Madam Karin Stoll's visit to the state of Andhra Pradesh where she met the Honorable Chief Minister and also where uh, she had met with the Honorable Minister for Industries recently and we had a uh, round table discussion with the senior ministers as well as senior officials uh, to give a lowdown on what's what's happening in Andhra Pradesh and what kind of projects we are working on and what's what's the government's agenda for growth and development in the state. Uh, moving on, uh, I would like to uh, give a brief on the state of Andhra Pradesh for our uh, uh, for, for people joining from Germany. So this is a, a state located on the uh, southern a part of India, which is a coastal state, uh, which is having the second higher, longest coastline um, uh, in the country. So we have, uh, 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 I mean, we are richer than uh, India on an average. We are 30% richer, uh, showing that we have a high purchasing power compared to the average Indians. And we are also uh, located at a geographical advantageous positions, uh, which can provide access to the uh, Southeast and Southeast Asia markets. Uh, and currently our GDP is uh, at uh, 138 billion, which is in the year for 2019-20. And I think in COVID, due to COVID, there was a, a little reduction, but uh, this is the recent number. And uh, moving on, uh, so if we come to the industrial ecosystem, uh, so we are, uh, uh, we have a world-class road and rail network. Uh, we have six operational ports and six airports of which three are international. And we are also focusing on uh, uh, investing into the future by building infrastructure, by uh, building into the human skills through various initiatives and skill development of which uh, uh, there are German partners as well. Uh, so, uh, and, and coming to the business environment, uh, there are a slew of initiatives which we have taken so that uh, 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 the, the businesses could find it easier and efficient to start business here. Uh, one of the initiatives was to uh, have all the approvals through a singleness portal, which is an online portal through which the company's file can uh, file for their approvals. So this is basically a, a, a visualization of what are the uh, available facilities in the singleness portal. Similarly, coming to some of the laurels we have had, uh, we are ranked number one in the ease of doing business by World Bank. Uh, uh, and it's not a one-off achievement. We are ranked number one for the past three years and number two before that year. And in the com global competitiveness index, uh, we rank 36. Uh, this is a global measurement by World Economic Forum. Uh, similarly, there is also another index called Logis Ease of Logistics Index, uh, which shows that how, how easy or difficult uh, for people or logistics to move in the country. So we rank number three in the country among all the states. And we rank number three in the investment potential index as well. So these are these basically show how attractive or how efficient uh, the state would be for anyone to start a business in here. Uh, so this is again a, a lowdown on the uh, single desk portal and the governance initiatives we have taken. So there are uh, close to 57,000 applications we have processed through the online system only, uh, where uh, there is no need for fiscal uh, fiscally going around. So more than 57,000 applications have been processed, and we have a service level agreement. Uh, service level arrangement so that uh, the uh, SLA is 21 days, but uh, we are able to meet it in 11 days, which is half of the SLA time. So this is the average time for approval. And similarly, we have various process improvements such as uh, uh, reform actions and the district level and below so that uh, the reform process can progress to the last mile of the government. So uh, coming to uh, coming to the availability of natural resources such as a water or encumbrance free land, we we stand number one. We have close to uh, forty eight thousand acres of the land bank which is encumbrance free. So this is owned by the government and the government can directly allot it to the industries. And on the on the water which is a, uh, a important uh, uh, input for the industries, we we are we are sufficient in water availability compared to any other state. We have. Uh, of uh, rich Godavari and Krishna basins. And we have also, uh, through a government order, allocated 10% of the water availability for the industrial purpose, which comes around 1,000 ml of water. So which is 1,000 megaliters of water per day for the industrial purpose. So uh, the state can be divided into three regions, the northern region, the southern region, and the central region. And each region has an allocated water source and water supply, which will be beneficial for the industries coming to set up anywhere here. And we're also working on uh, desalination plants so that uh, the uh, 
sea water as well can be used for the purpose and uh, and uh, uh, the uh, we are trying to understand what what could be the technologies which are beneficial and which can be cost effective as well we are working with uh, the countries also to to see what can be implemented in here which can which can be a benefit and uh, uh, so on the on the right slide, I have uh, talked about the land availability, and uh, it just shows a, a picture of what are the clusters we have identified and what is the area we have. Uh, so this is one of the uh, marquee projects of the government of India and government of Andhra Pradesh as well. We have uh, uh, three industrial corridors. Uh, which are running through the states so the industrial corridors are uh, an initiative to to spread the development and uh, uh, spur industrialization so this is the only state in the uh, country to have three industrial corridors so we have a industrial corridor from chennai to vishakhapatnam covering the length of the states and we have uh, chennai bangalore industrial corridor and we have hyderabad bangalore industrial corridor so basically every nook and cranny of the state is being covered by the industrial corridor and we have identified uh, nodes in each corridor which can be uh, which can be uh, which are being developed further with all the in required infrastructure such as power water roads uh, uh, supporting uh, effluent treatment plants and sewage treatment plants so that it can be a complete uh, a complete place for living in uh, living in here so this is one of the uh, other advantages uh, i'm gonna Half on one is uh, we are a power surplus state, and uh, we have 21 gigawatt of installed capacity, and we are the state with the lowest transmission losses. So this is three percent is the uh, last year till uh, this year it is close to 2.6 percent, uh, which is the lowest. And in the power mix as well, we are we are focusing heavily on moving to renewables. So uh, uh, India is one of the state. I mean India is this. Uh, uh, one of the countries for renewable uh, focusing on the renewable capacities we have the national level targets uh, for 2025 and 2030 and the government of ap is in line with the uh, india's targets and we are one of the states like rajasthan which has the highest uh, highest amount of sunny days which are 300 out of 365 with the solar insulation of more than 5 kilowatt per hour uh, so this is this shows that the capacity for the solar projects and we have already installed uh, uh, 10 gigawatt of solar and we are also planning to further uh, add another 10 gigawatt particularly for farmer use so that the grid can be modernized and the load can be shifted for industrial purpose and we are also modernizing our transmission equipment with 1.5 billion dollars of capex so there are uh, uh, manufacturing opportunities in uh, transmission equipment into remote terminal units or auto reclosures, transmission power equipment and intelligent electronic devices. Uh, coming to skill workforce as I found before, uh, uh, it's one of the uh, important uh, uh, areas for the government to focus on. We are, uh, we are building a skill college or skill center in every parliamentary constituency. And we are building in a high end skills university so that we can focus on the skills of tomorrow. Uh, which are focusing on artificial intelligence. Sorry, this a pop up on my screen. Yeah, artificial intelligence or uh, robotics, and machine learning, these kind of skills. And we have partnered with Siemens for developing the center of excellence. We have also partnered with the so systems for training uh, for training students so that they can be industry ready. So this is on the logistics aspect which I have touched in the initial. We are number three in the uh, logistics is in India, and we have uh, uh, three industrial corridors, and we have uh, six ports which are operational. And uh, we we are planning uh, three more ports at in the I mean throughout the length of the uh, length of the state, and this will help industrialization as well as this will give a boost to our export export promotions. And uh, this is uh, just a comparison. Uh, this is a sample comparison of various parameters compared to the other states, how, how uh, we compare to other states based on the uh, cost of labor or the cost of land and uh, versus the cost of power or water. So we, we compare favorably, we, we compete with the best destinations in the country. Uh, so this is just a lowdown on the, on the numbers. 
and uh, this is uh, one of the other initiatives of the uh, the government leadership so we want to uh, um, move beyond ease of doing business we want to reduce the cost of doing business so if someone is coming to uh, set up we want to make it uh, make it an efficient destination so that the cost of setting up uh, is also reduced similarly uh, so we have uh, uh, made, uh, taken certain initiatives such as uh, having the land uh, instead of paying an upfront payment we can have it on lease so that the initial investment could be reduced and a lease agreement can be secured similarly we we are committed to an, uh, giving 24 by 7 power so which will reduce the uh, which will reduce the uh, cost in having a, a power backup equipment something and we are also uh, improving on skilling skilling our workforce so this will again reduce the cost for the company to invest in skilling their own workforce and we are also uh, making every district center and an um, example so that uh, uh, so that the industries who are coming in can directly interact at the district level and get the get the things done so this is one of the uh, one of the survey which was conducted by the invest india in partnership with the jll and they have uh, declared the tirupati uh, tirupati nellore region as one of the 10 best uh, 10 best places in india for manufacturing uh, so some of the reasons are it falls in the influence of uh, our two industrial corridors namely vcic and cbic and uh, it has uh, already a significant significant electronics uh, industries present there and it's also closer to the international airports in chennai and in tirupati closer to the ports krishnapatna port and chennai port so uh, quite a lot of advantages and also you have an uh, availability of skilled uh, skilled manpower because of closeness to the bangalore and uh, closeness to bangalore chennai and tirupati it also has mineral reserves making it all the more attractive so this is our uh, industrial policy 2020-23, uh, uh, which was launched last year by the Honorable Industries Minister. So we have a slew of uh, incentives for uh, for uh, for companies wanting to set up in the state, and uh, we have various incentives across the capital subsidy or the SGST or the forward pass. And we also have the tailor made or custom in, uh, custom incentives for for people who are providing employment to more than 2,000. So some of the focus sector I would like to quickly focus on, uh, which have a matching interest, uh, as I understand, as we understand with the uh, German metal stand companies would be electronics. Uh, we are we are one of the uh, top uh, states in the electronics production in the country. We have a special incentive package for people, uh, for the companies into uh, moving into electronics production. Uh, we have marquee companies such as Flex, Panasonic, uh, Dixon uh, in the state. Uh, and. And, and coming to automobiles, uh, the, the state is uh, home to one of the largest, I mean, the largest investment, uh, largest FDI in the country so far, which is Kia Motors. And we also have Isuzu, which is again a Japanese multinational, uh, which are, these, uh, these two are the largest uh, auto entrants in the last few years, uh, making the state uh, their home. And also we have uh, domestic companies as well, such as Apollo Tires or Hero Motor Corp, Ashok Leyland, which have, uh, which have opened their plants in the, in the state. Uh, so textiles uh, is again uh, we have a natural advantage of being the largest producer of cotton or raw silk production and we want to move into uh, a value addition value added activities in textiles uh, so such as technical textiles or man-made fiber so that uh, uh, so that the valuation can be improved and the industrialization could be achieved similarly pharma is another uh, success story or a growth story for the state we have 250 plus pharma units which are a WHO, I mean, of which 40 are uh, WHO approved and 20 are US FDA approved. Uh, we produce India 16% of the pharma production happens in our country, and we have close to 2.5 billion dollars of uh, investment, uh, US dollars of investment in the pharma sector. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, success stories uh, which was uh, which was done by the state is on the Pradesh Med Tech Zone. So this is the one of the kind of initiatives in the state and. Uh, this has been uh, quite uh, successful because we have a production of uh, 3.5 billion US dollars in three years. We have already uh, 22 operational companies, and this this success has been noted by the government of India as well. And uh, they are planning to uh, implement the similar structure in other states as well. So these are few of the companies uh, which are already operational. Uh, this is IGIAT, this is Indo-German Institute of Advanced Technology, which is in our state. Uh, so basically, this uh, IN is to skill. Uh, people, uh, skill uh, students who are in on various uh, uh, latest technologies, and uh, and it will be a one-stop shop. This is located in the in the in the port city of Vishakhapatnam. Uh, 
so these are few of the uh, german companies uh, which are operational which are operational in uh, in the state uh, right from pharma or renewables or waste and waste to energy and i think uh, yeah i think this is a overview of siemens gamesa which is operational in nello district i believe they they uh, they have a, uh, a short brief on this they are going to tell and this is on the refra technic uh, which is operational again in vishakhapatnam uh, and uh, and uh, i mean we are we are eager to hear from you we want to understand what are what are your requirements and how we can help so so thank you thank you so much for uh, your uh, for, for this opportunity and we are uh, we are here for you and thank you yeah thank you thank you thank you mr viswadat for giving us uh, a brief overview of uh, opportunities and opportunities in andhra pradesh and also the sectoral capabilities and the uh the investment you have already received on andhra pradesh it was also good to see the uh, german uh, collaborations you already have and the german german companies presence you already have in the state and also uh, uh, we would like to uh, let's say really highlight the point that andhra pradesh is is the number one uh, state when it comes to the ease of doing business in india as per the world bank report so thank you very much vishwadat with this uh, and with this we would like to uh, move to our next speaker mr himanshu biswal he is a site head of siemens gamesa renewable energy private limited located in nello and uh, they are manufacturing rotor blades for wind turbine generator in their facility so mr himanshu i am just uh, making you presenter so you can share your screen over to you mr biswal are you able to see my screen? yes yeah thanks uh, uh can, can you can you see my screen yes we can see it yeah fine uh so i i represent siemens kamesa where into uh, renewable energy uh, we have a plant uh, near to nello uh, it's on the highway and uh, uh, the uh testimonial or the slogan from our companies uh, like uh, to be a global leader in renewable energy industry driving the transition towards the sustainable world so this is uh, something which is nothing new like uh, to make a sustainable world we need to go for an energy which can be renewed uh, not like uh, the conventional uh, form of energy which uh, can be existed uh, decades from now and so it's already a shown signs of getting existed or shown signs of getting uh, getting costly day by day and also it is impacting our uh, environment uh, so we are happy to be uh, there in this uh, field and we are a global leader and we want to go further uh, to uh, make it a, a pleasant world or a sustainable world this is uh, the slogan from us uh, and uh, talking about the business uh, we have called the siemens gamesa renewable energy private limited in fact it's an amalgamation of uh, siemens and gamesa put together gamesa is a spanish company as you know and siemens basically a german company uh, so we have a legacy of gamesa plant and then it is now merging to siemens and uh, the the merged company is called siemens gamesa now it is situated as i already told in the nellor city of andhra pradesh uh, uh, on the southern part of india and the plant has started operation in 2016 to manufacture uh, rotor blades for wind turbine generators uh, currently we are exporting rotor blades to different countries across the globe uh, and the, the plant has a current capability to produce uh, uh, the blades which would be uh, measured in terms of megawatt like uh, uh, suppose we make three blades uh, it goes for a, a, a wtg of, of 5 megawatt capacity uh, so three blade put together uh, is considered to be 5 megawatt and similarly if i calculate the total capacity for a year with four production line we are at 1200 megawatt capability as of now uh, and we can ramp up further of course uh, the currently manufacturing type of blade is shooting to uh, siemens gamesa 114 model and siemens gamesa 145 model uh, having said this uh, 114 and 145 for ease of your understanding 114 uh, uh, represents the rotor diameter 
of a particular blade which is rotating on a wind turbine generator that means put together uh, two or three blades the diameter it strips is 114 meter so uh, in a layman's term uh, the it turns out to be 55 meter blade one blade uh, is as long as 55 meter for the first variety and the second variety is, is something around 70 meter uh, we are looking forward to go for a bigger models as we can see uh, in the later slides uh, the revenue we are expecting from this plant for the current year is 60 million euro so we uh, uh, represent a european company so we our figures are in euro uh, so it's a 60 million euro from this narrow blade plant uh, in india we have two plants one for blade as i already told you it's a narrow and another is uh, the other components uh, like the nacelle and hub as you know uh, each of the uh, uh, turbine has got uh, three major component one is blade which is rotating and the other two are stationary like the nacelle which uh, houses the generator itself and the hub uh, meaning uh, that the connection part uh, and the tower uh, in fact tower we don't manufacture we get it from uh, outside from uh, outsourced from other industry for the nacelle and hub plant we have another plant in Tamil Nadu which is our neighboring uh, state uh, in a place called Mamandu uh, the, about the company uh, we have uh, started our operation uh, in India in 2019 of course the Nello plant was in operation in 2016 but prior to that we have already uh, uh, started operation in 2009 uh, in the current uh, scenario we have uh, around 700 employees uh, uh, from direct and indirect uh, resources uh, from Andhra Pradesh district itself and they are basically uh, from the surrounding area of the plant uh, we have a very strong R&D capability uh, we have an R&D office in India in Bangalore uh, supported by the global R&D facility in Spain Denmark and Germany uh, our uh, key contribution uh, for Make in India program is to uh, go for indigenizing the raw material uh, as you know the blade industry is a very typical industry and we have to source a measure of our raw material from abroad so we are trying to indigenize the raw material uh, to source it from india to reduce the input cost and also to insulate ourselves from global ups and downs uh, as uh, already told uh, we have already entered india in 2009 that is 12 years, uh, 12 years uh, back uh, uh, on the next point, uh, the investment we made in this particular plant is around 100 million euro. Uh, the percentage of export as of now is 100 percent. We make uh, blades for the export market. Uh, of course, we can make for a domestic market, but presently we are exporting all the blades. Uh, the workforce uh, currently is around 200 people, direct and indirect put together. Uh, this can go up uh, to 1500 or 2000 uh, because we have a good facility here the infrastructure consists of 150 acre of land uh, for future expansion and uh, uh, and uh, uh, having the downstream industry placed in our premises itself so 1200 people can go up further uh, if you want to expand uh, the current uh, uh, capacity as you know uh, we are producing uh, one on four meter blade and 145 meter rotor dia blade we started with 114 and subsequently moved to 122 meter rotor dia and finally settled in 145 and we are soon going to start 170 meter blade uh, which meaning that the each of the blade length will be around 80 meter 80 to 85 meter uh, the chief sectors uh, which were uh, a driver for growth is the renewable energy as the name suggests and we are also enabling the other factors other infra, other other sectors like infrastructure for uh, power and port and uh, the soft and hard services logistics and uh, also we are helping in generating local employment uh, we uh, are uh, giving educational uh, support uh, to uh, to different uh, industries at uh, different uh, universities and educational institutes uh, and also we are employing people from uh, ITA institute uh, to make them uh, industry ready uh, 
we also uh, are indebted to uh, the local government uh, to give us a speedy clearance and uh, clearing all our roadblocks and hurdles so that we can uh, in a record time we could uh, produce uh, the product uh, from the uh, uh, time of the groundbreaking ceremony so we are uh, we are thankful to the local government and uh, we uh, assure you that you will also get the same type of support as we already got it uh, the sectors we are uh, associated with is uh, the power distribution company uh, and also the ministry uh, it's a, a ministry of renewable energy india uh, uh, we are looking forward to grow uh, from 1200 megawatt to 1500 megawatt by the year 2023 so with this uh, i conclude my presentation if uh, uh, anybody has any question please go ahead please so uh, mr biswal thank you very much for your presentation and uh, giving us uh, an overview of siemens uh, gamesa nello plant and your activities um, as coming to q and a session we will come to uh, uh, it uh, at the end of after uh, at the end of session uh, once so uh, once mr shankar is also uh, done done with his presentation so i am now inviting mr shankar uh, mr v uday shankar who is a graduate mechanical engineer and having a postgraduate qualifications in management and economics he has over 33 years of experience in re factory industry and for the last 14 years he has been working with refra technic group uh, in india so uh, over to you uh, mr shankar Thank you. Could you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Uh, good morning to all uh, and to the listeners in Germany and uh, good afternoon to all to the listeners in India. So I'm from Refractic Group, Refractic India Private Limited. Refractic India Private Limited is a 100% uh, subsidy of Refractic Steel GmbH. The Refractic Group is located in, in uh, Munich. So I give a small brief introduction of Refractic Group. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Shankar, can you just go yeah. on PPT mode or full screen mode? Yeah, that's what I tried. Uh, it could, ah, yes, that is okay. Yeah. So it is the It's a subsidy of Infotech Holding. It's based in Munich, and we are operating about 15 plants in. Uh, uh, with a production capacity of more than 650,000 tons high-grade refractory materials. And we have service center offices in various parts of the world. There are group engages um, about uh, 1,500 employees and generated total turnover of more than 700 million euro. We are currently engaged in the business of supplying refractory materials to various and non federal sectors in India. As you know, refractory materials are high temperature application materials used in all steel and non-ferrous industries. Without refractory materials, no metal having high temperature can be produced. Yeah. We started our journey uh, in 2013. We started our licensing office in, uh, in Vishakhapatnam. Then we uh, incorporated Refractic India Private Limited in 2017, and we started a small plant for producing high aluminum monolithic uh, manufacturing unit in 2020 in Vishakhapatnam. Then uh, we purchased the land to put up our own manufacturing unit uh, at Parvada in Vishakhapatnam, and we are expected to produce our refractories by 2033. And uh, so far, we have invested around 5 million euro, and we are going to invest around 25 million euro uh, in establishing a plant uh, in Vishakhapatnam. And we are going to produce around 30,000 tons per annum of uh, various uh, refractories. And we are going to make uh, Vishakhapatnam as one of the hub for our future expansion project. And this Vishakhapatnam center will serve the steel and non industries across India. Southeast Asia and the Middle East. As of now, we have around 47 employees on our road, and we are going to generate employment of around 250 employees direct 
and uh, about to maybe 100 employees on uh, indirect employment we could uh, provide. The other just a bird's view of the plant that we are going to uh, erect at Visharpatnam. Uh, I give just small, this is a small presentation, but I give the path, uh, brief background why we selected Visharpatnam on the Pradesh. So as you all know, Visharpatnam is growing and is the investor friendly state. And the government of Andhra Pradesh has taken many measures for promoting investment. And Vishapatnam, as Mr. Uh, Vishwadath Ji has presented, Vishapatnam is as uh, one of the biggest port and has all facilities for import and export of, fact, of materials. It is near to Southeast Asia and near Middle East uh, through good port proximity. It has good infrastructure facilities like road, uninterrupted power supply, as we are. Uh, surplus of our state. Our objective is to serve steel and non-ferrous customers. We achieve this by locating our units in strategic places with good facilities and infrastructure. And that's why we have selected Vishapatnam as uh, India is driven by Make in India initiative. We are privileged to establish our first plant in the city of Destiny, Vishapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. And we are looking for a promising collaboration with the Andhra Pradesh government. We have acquired land of 16 acres in Parvada Industrial Zone. The, so far, the acquisition has been very smooth and uh, we are shortly going to start our construction plant. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. So, thank you, Mr. Shankar. We have received a uh, few questions on, uh, on, in, on, on the investment queries from the companies. Uh, first question is for, uh, it can be answered by uh, Mr. Biswal or Mr. Shankar. It's it's asking that uh, the question is why you have chose Andhra Pradesh, which uh, partly Mr. Shankar you have already uh, answered, but the, the and the question uh, ends with what are the top three uh, drivers behind or let's say or advantages in Andhra Pradesh? In, in, in operating in Andhra Pradesh. So, what are the top three advantages in operating in Andhra Pradesh? Yeah, if you are asking me, uh, see, we uh, in 2016, in a record time, we could finish the uh, production set. Uh, it was less than one year. Such a big infrastructure, like 150 acre of land uh, with uh, four buildings, uh, four workshops. And with the administrative building, it was a massive job uh, of 100 million euro. Uh, so we got a lot of support from government. Uh, uh, the chief minister's office was kind enough to support us in our respect. And the local authority also gave us all the clearance in quick time. Uh, so that's a good experience like uh, uh, from the government level support. It's something which is very incredible uh, and uh, not uh, to be seen uh, many places. Uh, so uh, that uh, uh, has given me a kind of uh, uh, like uh, uh, like a, to to express my gratitude and also to assure others that you will also get uh, the same kind of support uh, from the local authority or the government authority of Andhra Pradesh. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Shankar, you would like to add something here? Sorry, there's an interruption. Can I, can, I, can I hear the question again? Yeah, the question was, what are the key advantages of operating in Andhra Pradesh? Yeah, as I mentioned, the key advantage that uh, the main advantage to uh, Andhra Pradesh is the port proximity, the airport proximity. We are also going to get a big airport at Bogapuram and the good route connectivity, power supplies, we have all the advantages for operating uh, a unit, a manufacturing unit. And another uh, factor, mainly for refractory industry in Vizag is that Vizag has been uh, the major uh, destination for all uh, refractory raw materials import. All the refractory raw materials uh, into India are uh, being imported into Vishapatnam port. This is the main hub. That's why it is the right place for us to start uh, industry at Vishapatnam. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is uh, for Mr. Vishwadat. Uh, it's coming from Mr. Sahil Khatri from Rodan Partner. He's asking, 
what are the various incentives provided by andhra pradesh government for msme companies uh, for less than 50 crore investment in plant and machinery so uh, so for msmes we have uh, various incentives such as one is capital subsidy so the amount that spent on capital acquiring like from plant and machinery or the land we have, we are subsidizing up to 20% which will be reimbursed once they start production and also we have uh, 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 reimbursement of the stamp duty and and the reimbursement of the power cost by 1 rupee per kilowatt hour so i can i can just show this slide if you could allow me so that yes sure just give me a moment yeah people could follow you yeah. yeah so here uh, here you can see that we have uh, uh, for micro and small we have reimbursement of 100% of sdst as well we have reimbursement of uh, interest if they have taken uh, for, for starting the enterprise and we also have uh, rebate on the land cost for micro and small enterprises so so these are these are some of the uh, i mean incentives that are on offer for as per the policy and and there are also sector specific incentives such as for electronics or electric vehicles if they are coming in they have a uh, additional incentive which would be applicable to them okay thank you before going to the next question i would like to uh, uh, ask audience if they have any questions please you can click on raised hand icon on your platform so i can unmute you so you don't have to really type the question i can also unmute you to take your direct questions for the speakers so uh, coming to the questions we show that the next question is about the handling of approvals for new investment approvals online uh, through through single portal online single portal how it functions in e, uh, andhra pradesh uh so we have a uh, single desk portal called apindustries.gov.in uh, from where an entrepreneur or a company can register through their uh, i mean through their representative uh, so the companies will have their permanent tax account number which will be their identifier and they can register through it and once they have registered uh, we will handhold them or help them understand what are the set of uh, initial uh, set of documents or what are the set of uh, approvals which are needed uh and then they can start uh, filling it one by one and the approvals would come online so so uh, this is basically i mean i can i can share uh, i can share a document as well how how this whole thing works so uh, i mean the participant it could be shared with participants along with the presentation okay so i hope that answers the question yeah yeah thank thank you for for the for the transparency mr vishwanath and we have one question coming in from mr koos uh mr uh mr kurs i have just i have just unmuted you sorry yeah you can go ahead you can ask a question now so can you hear me now yes we can hear you okay this just a small question um we tried to open a company from last year july and it we needed time uh, until um to receive the certificate of incorporation until march this year this is a very very long time when i want to found this company in singapore i will use maybe one week um, it's and many or in, in estonia we needed three days to open the company electronically and another point is i spoke with for example here in germany but and also in um, Isaac with icici bank and they promised me it will use another three to six months just to open a bank account uh, for a private just a private small private limited company and um, so i'm well connected with Andra and many friends there until 2015 and um, we want to do more but this is is a very important thing not just for companies with hundreds of millions of dollars or euros but even for middle stand companies um, or smaller companies and um, so what is it so i'm very um, happy about the new government now but i'm also looking forward what is what they are doing in the administration that 
all these things will be easier. So what is on the way? This is my interest. So because I, it's just not this company we want to do more. So um, okay. Yeah. Uh, please allow me to answer, uh, Mr. Ketan. Um, yes. So, so on this respect, what I would suggest is, I'm sorry that uh, you had to, I mean, wait for such a long time. But what I would suggest is maybe we could connect online and, uh, I mean, over email, and then we would help you uh, to explain this process and ensure that uh, what are the what are the uh, uh, things which have caused the delay and ensure that this will not happen to other investors or other. Uh, companies from not even uh, even from Germany or other places. So so I can I can share my email ID along with my colleague Mr. Ambedkar. So we could or we could write write to you directly. I oh, think that okay. would be a better yes. way. Yeah, this is okay. Thank you very yeah. much. I will come back to this point. But I think this is also in general very important if and I want to grow and if this bridge from Germany to uh, and I should should increase. So um, just. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So from, from my side, I would like to add here, Mr. Coach, that uh, as, a, as a part of Making India Middle Eastern program, we have been supporting uh, German mid-sized companies and family-owned companies for the last six years now. And we have been experiencing such issues while incorporating, uh, incorporating a company in India or even opening a bank account. That has taken, in some cases, uh, as you said, the time till two months for incorporation and three months for bank account opening. Uh, so uh, I, I understand the challenges in the process. Uh, there are documentation, physical documentation has to be done. There are lots of uh, signatures and director, uh, the signatures of directors, and also lots of courier, uh, courier of documentation has to uh, done. So I know there are challenges, but. Uh, in case you have or let's say provided you have very good partner legal and legal partner and the banking partner who is very much sound of all the challenges and uh, uh, the bottlenecks possible bottlenecks uh, in, in in future so they would really help you to close it in in time so it's basically uh, let's in as vishwadat said if you if you have any further uh, let's say if you face any further challenges or any bottlenecks please get in touch with uh, andhra pradesh government or even making it a restaurant program we are there to help you for uh, all the queries and all the all the bottlenecks you may face in future. So, with that, thank you very much for. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, with okay. that. Thank uh, you. Yeah. With that, I would like to thank all the speakers uh, today for participating in this webinar, and all the uh, audiences who have participated in this webinar. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, you can always write it to uh, Vishwadat or even CEO of Andhra Pradesh EDP, which is the email IDs are visible on the screen. You can also approach uh, Make an Indian Middle Eastern program at mim at Indian Embassy .de or, and we will definitely share the presentations presented today and also the recording recorded version on YouTube. So in case you want to share or uh, share uh, this webinar with the potential investors or colleagues you know in the industry, you can always feel free to share this uh, webinar. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vishwadat. Thank you, Mr. Shankar. Thank you, Mr. Biswal for joining uh, today's webinar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ketan, for organizing this. Uh, thank you for the whole embassy team and the Make in India Metal Stand team for organizing and i would like to personally thank mr uday shankar from prefra technique and mr himan shubushan biswal from uh, uh, from siemens kamesa for taking their time out and trying to uh, put out their testimonies for for all the audience to hear i, I believe that would be a great help for the state as well and for the uh, people who are looking from germany to understand how the state functions uh, the testimonies would, would be of great help because directly hearing from hasa smoke also smoke uh, is better any any time so thank you thank you so much uh, Vidya Shankarji and Himanshu Bhushan Biswalji. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for giving the opportunity. Thank you. Namaste. Uh,